Hello and welcome to the third lesson on asset security where we talk about data states. First thing we'll talk about is data at rest. When you're talking about data at rest, we're talking about data that's sitting on a hard drive or sitting on media of some kind and it's not doing anything. So for example, if we had a, a group of SSNs, I just made this number up here, the data isn't moving and it's not being processed. It's just being stored. If it's sitting on this drive, the CBK mentions that one thing you want to do is encrypt it so that it appears as ciphertext. Now data in use is when the data is being processed into volatile memory or RAM. So for example, we have this SSN, that same SSN that was on the last drive, it's not encrypted when it's in process. It's data that's in use. And so the SSN would be visible when it's in random access memory. So that presents a vulnerability for information security professionals. Now data in motion, data in transit, is when it's being transmitted across a wire. And so you definitely want to encrypt. And in domain two, it talks about two different types of encryption. It talks about end-to-end -end and link encryption. So we'll get into that on this slide here. Link encryption, that's when you encrypt and you decrypt at each node. So for example, if you're at your computer and you had link encryption enabled, you were sending data to another device, it would, it would basically encrypt and decrypt at each stop. So you have here a router and it's gonna decrypt and then it's gonna re-encrypt and then it's gonna decrypt when it goes to this and then it's gonna re-encrypt before it sends to its ultimate destination here where it's gonna also decrypt the information. And of course you would have to have the appropriate keys in place at each stop. So it's a little bit, a little bit more of an effort to implement. And the thing about this to remember is that routing information is invisible. When you use link encryption, everything is basically invisible to anyone who is trying to spy or tap into the wires. Whereas with end-to-end -end encryption, it's a little bit different. You're encrypting between the two endpoints. So for example, your computer accessing YouTube to watch this video, you're encrypting the session. As it goes across the wire, you might have several stops here but your encryption is happening at the endpoints. So you have the YouTube server here, and then you have your computer here, and you've encrypted it here on your device, and then you've encrypted it here at the application layer. And so the difference between link encryption and end-to-end -end encryption is that the routing information with end-to-end -end is visible. So anybody that eavesdrops on your wires, they can actually see the website, the, the IP address, that you're that you're accessing but the one thing they can't see is the actual content so they wouldn't be able to see the vi the specific video that you're watching or if you have a bank session for example it would work the same way with your bank they would be able to see that you access your bank let's say it's wells fargo but they would not be able to see your balance they would not be able to see what you're accessing on the wells fargo website as always thank you for watching please visit cissprep.net for our free study guide, our super study guide, and also over 1,200 practice questions. Thanks and have a great day.